Hello everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Cooler Master has a line of air coolers called Master Air in the series. There are like nine coolers. We've got three of them here. Now, I've already reviewed the Master Air G100M. It's a low profile cooler. And then I reviewed the Master Air MA410M. But today we've got the Master Air MA620M. Uh, all of them have RGB lighting effects. Uh, it's all integrated in with the cooler, so they look pretty cool. But uh, we'll get this one out of the box here and see what it looks like. So first thing we'll look at the box here for the specs. Uh, what's important really is the socket coverage and we've really got everything covered. AMD we go all the way up to the latest AM4. Intel we go all the way up to the latest LGA 2066. And everything in between down to the old 775. Another thing that's usually important here is your overall height which is 165 millimeters so you need to make sure your case can handle a cooler that's that tall. And the other thing is your uh, fan speed is 650 to 2000. It's PWM fan. And those are the main important things. So now I can get the box open. All right, so on top is hardware box, mounting brackets, mounting hardware, manual, and some connectors for the RGB, thermal paste, all the good stuff. cooler. Oh, that looks nice. All black. Heat pipes black. Everything except the very end of the copper uh, copper plate there. That's the only thing that is not black. Down at the bottom here we've got the RGB connector and then the four pin PWM fan connector. I counted the fins. I think I came up with 54 or 55. And if we look at the base a little more closely, you can see we have these very long attachment bolts that go up through the cooler. And they're spring-loaded and they're retained, so that simplifies the mounting. And then inside here you can see we have some vertical fins They've taken advantage of the space that's available above the base here and they've put an additional heat sink on there with some fins to help dissipate heat. And buried deep within is a single SF120R fan, so it's a 120 millimeter fan. And you know, just looking at it, you almost can't even tell there's a fan in there. We'll have to pop that out and take a look at it peel off the protective plastic. Set that off to the side. And of course those two screw heads there are for the bolts that go all the way through the fin stack. Come out the bottom there. So I like the idea of that kind of a mounting system. There's the Cooler Master hexagonal logo, which is part of the RGB system. And looking at the bottom in a little more detail, these are six millimeter diameter heat pipes, which is pretty standard. And the way the heat pipes are arranged, there are six of them. So you've got 12 termination points at the opposite end there. But the way they lined them up so your airflow goes through the cooler, actually there's a little sticker on the side here that shows you which direction the airflow is, right there. So the airflow comes in this side and goes out that side. But anyway. What they've done, if I can get this thing to stay focused, is uh, they've put all of the heat pipes to get maximum exposure to the airflow. Is they put them all next to each other. So we've got three across the front here, another three, and then three heat pipes and three heat pipes, and they're all sticking up. Kind of hard to see through the cooler. But we can look at this nice graphic here, thanks to Cooler Master's website. And that explains it far better than I can. Now the other nice thing they've done, they've given us two cutouts there, two notches on either side for your RAM modules, for the heat spreaders. 
because they can be tall and they can interfere with your CPU cooler. So Cooler Master has taken that into consideration. I went ahead and popped the little side covers off there just to show you how the fan is sandwiched in there. Now you should never have to take those covers off normally. And I'm not going to attempt to take the top off there that has the embedded LEDs. But again, I'll refer back to the Cooler Master website. They've got a really nice exploded view showing the diffuser and how everything goes together. Again, this is all stuff you should never really have to ever take apart. But uh, Cooler Master's done a really nice job of showing all the different lighting effects and capabilities uh, for this cooler. So the next thing to do here is to get this cooler installed to the system. Now the test system here is an older MSI Z87 motherboard with a somewhat out of style 4770K, but the goal here is to crank out some heat so we can do the thermal testing. Another thing I like to mention is the little sticker on the bottom is there to protect it from being scratched up because you want that to be in pristine condition. And every cooler I've ever seen has a little sticker on it. But just make sure in all the excitement of building a new system that you don't forget and leave it on there because its job is to protect but it can also be a nice insulator. So peel that off or your thermal performance will be horrible and don't ask how I know that. So moving along to the hardware, uh, the manual has a lot of good information in it. it has uh, all the hardware, what's included and where to put it, how to install it. You want to make sure you familiarize yourself because no matter how much experience you've got, there's always an opportunity to miss something. So we have three bags. The manual's in the first bag. The rest of this hardware here is in the second bag. So we have our base plate all the fasteners, little cross brackets, thermal paste for all your different sockets. And then over here is the little clicker controller there for your uh, RGB control. And you got the SATA connector to get power up to it. And then the connector there for the RGB system. To go back to the motherboard, if your motherboard happens to have RGB uh, capabilities, which this one does not, but we're not too worried about that. So one of the more important processes here is actually building up this base bracket and the instruction manual is very clear on how to do this so you want to sort of look at that first uh, you want to know what socket you've got because there are several different configurations so I got all the hardware uh, separated for my particular socket for the 4770k and I got two of these little corner pieces in but they're square on the bottom and there's a slot that that square fits in that allows it to slide back and forth like that and then these little clips go over the end and sort of lock it in there, but you're not quite done yet because you have to pop this in like that. It makes a little snap. And then the little plastic clip along with the metal stud can slide back and forth. And there are little detents that sort of, uh, you got three positions based on which socket. So, and again, the manual does a fine job of explaining that. Now I put enough of these together that I sort of know where these go intuitively and that's ready and then these studs screw in over the top but there's actually a little metal washer or a little I guess that could be plastic yeah a little plastic washer on there anyway uh, that's meant to go against your motherboard and protect it so that's the purpose of that. So you want to make sure that is stuck uh, some coolers you have to put those on yourself this one it comes with the little washers already stuck on there. And it's time to peel the sticker off. So now the cooler is installed, and before I power the system up, uh, I need to get power to the RGB system, but the single fan here, I plug into my main CPU header, so that will go there. Getting the RGB connected is pretty simple. There's one SATA power connector, and then on the other end here, uh, depending upon what motherboard you've got, 
um, actually right here. You've got a Gigabyte, uh, ASUS, MSI. Uh, these different uh, connectors here are to interface to those different motherboards. But something that's important, if you look at these RGB connectors, and they're all the same, on one end, or one side there, there's a little arrow. I don't know how easily you can see that, but there's a little arrow there. And you need to line that up with the arrow on the opposing cable, because it will go together the wrong way, and you don't want to do that. Uh, bad things can happen. So you look for the little tiny arrow, and you make sure that they're both facing each other before you plug it in. And then this end here goes to the SATA power. So I got the SATA power connected, the uh, RGB connection, and then the other part coming off the SATA connector, there's this little four pin uh, flat connector, and that goes into your little controller here. So once you plug that in and turn the motherboard on, and wow, that is really intense. And I can tell you that looking at it in person, it is much more vivid than what the camera is picking up. Yeah, the colors are much more intense when you're standing here looking at them. Yeah, the camera is just not really picking up how vivid those colors are. They are much more intense. I thought maybe a close-up I could show it, but... And I like the way they did the Cooler Master hexagonal logo, but you don't see the actual text. There's no text there, so it really doesn't matter which way you put the cooler, you won't be looking at text that is upside down. But the more I look at this, this is really an attractive cooler. The matte black finish, the way they've rounded all the corners, sort of covered everything. There's a fan in there, but you can't see it. The way they've integrated the fasteners into the top. This is one of the nicer looking coolers I think I've seen. So I went and turned the lights out in the room to see if that has any effect on how the camera picks up the colors and they just look a little washed out. It's really hard to describe. And I know I keep saying it, but they really are much more vivid and intense uh, when I'm standing here in person. So push some buttons on the controller here, or the main button I should say, and see what that does. Okay. So we have several different lighting effects here. That one's a very bright red. Intense blue, green, white, off, if you don't want any colors at all. We're back to the rainbow. Alright, well, let's get the lights back on here. So there's the exhaust side where the warmer air is coming out and then we come around here to the intake side and you can see it's a little cooler. And down there is where the heat pipes come up out of the base plate. And down here it gets really warm around the VRM. And then on the side is the little plastic cover for the fan, but you can see on the right the Fin stack's a little warmer than on the left. So we're at 4.2 gigahertz. We're holding around 78C. And that's about what I expect for a dual tower single fan cooler like this. But the more I look at it, the more attractive I think this cooler is. I really like the lines. I like how smooth and stealthy it looks. And even if you're not a big fan of the RGB, you can turn that off and you still have a really nice looking cooler. And again, talking about the RGB, 
uh, if you have a motherboard that supports it, again, you use these special cables to plug in. That makes your uh, RGB fully addressable up here on the cooler. So you can do a lot more with the light show beyond what's just sort of programmed into this little controller. And then one other thing here, this connection to help keep it together and protect it, they give you this little protective cap and it just sort of pops over the top there and uh, keeps your cables connected. If I can do that one handed. Yep. Snaps over there and just keeps your connection from becoming unplugged. So that's nice. Well, I'm pretty impressed with this cooler. The MA620M here is well rounded, it's affordable. Right now, you can find it on Amazon for $99 for an attractive, stealthy looking cooler with the side notches here that uh, allow for your RAM on either side to have the tall heat spreaders, the fully addressable RGB, the single very quiet fan in the center, the easy installation. Uh, I just don't see how you could go wrong. A lot of things do go into the performance, uh, factor into the performance of a cooler, such as your case size, the number of fans, where the fans are located in your case, temperature of the room, all those things come together and have an effect on your cooler performance. So as I always say with these things, your mileage will vary. So again, $99, I think it's a good value. This is going to get the OCC Editor's Choice Award, I'm happy to say. So if you have any questions or comments, post them, in the, uh, post them below in the comments section. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.